One, two, three. You're listening to the world famous White Roof Radio, webcast number 608, recorded October 20th, 2016. Tonight, brought to you by CravenSpeed.com, MotoringStripes.com, and OutMotoring.com. Mini performance, speed, and style. It's OutMotoring.com. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Stevie in Arizona, coming at you with a brand new episode, finally, of the world famous White Roof Radio, number 608, uh, underneath the White Roof. That's a lot of times that we've actually gotten together, 608 times, uh, most of those times, in fact, almost all of those times, with my good friend Todd Pearson from MotoringStripes.com. Todd, say hi. I am here, hello. Outstanding. And we're joined this evening as well by the good reverend, Mr. Uh, Detroit-tuned himself, Chad Miller. Chad, say hi. Hello, everybody. Oh, and he's got a little got that. Join us from a diner tonight. <laughs> yeah, a little raspy tonight. We got the we got dishes in the background. We got a bottle of wine that's almost gone, and uh, nice. you know it's uh, we're finishing it off. Nice. That's and good. and not joining us tonight is Alex because yeah, well, Alex, he's tied up. Uh, he's he's tied up. You know, watching the uh, um, Al Smith dinner <laughs> <laughs> on C-SPAN. <laughs> is he still in the running? No, he's not. I actually. <laughs> That's funny. That's, no, that's funny, um, Chad. It's funny because I, I actually watched that before the show, but we're not did talking about politics. Did you really? I did. This I, is the anti politics show. I tonight. told you how much I am into this whole political yeah, thing. Yeah, you I really are. Yeah. Todd, if you if you guys want to have, have a chat about politics, go ping Todd in the comments at White Refrain out of Comrade on the Facebook page. Maybe not I on the Facebook Twitter page. Feed because I just go ape, you know. Yeah, you know, ape bonkers. Yeah. Ape poop. We're actually saying around uh, the shop that uh, we're not going to vote. We're going to write in our candidate, and it's going to be Henry Rollins. <laughs> okay. I like it. I think every election season there's a write-in campaign for Henry Rollins, isn't there? There should be, if there isn't. I, I want to say like uh, like maybe like uh, about 100 people, maybe 200 people write in Henry Rollins every election cycle. Rockstar. That's right. funny. Yeah. And horror film maker extraordinaire. Yeah, if you guys aren't familiar with who Henry Rollins is, uh, just Google search. It's safe. Um, you might not like his music, but it's safe. He's a brilliant guy. It really is. Yeah, he's very, very smart. Very smart. He also he also played a cop in a show with, um, oh, geez, it was called like the, uh, it, was a, it was a cop chase scene. And uh, the two of the Red Hot Chili Peppers flee. And oh, Anthony that was Kiedis what movie? Too. What movie was, was like, that? It was called The Chase, I think. Oh, I watched that movie. Yeah, it had that uh, that dude that got on drugs uh, for a while. Charlie Sheen was in it. Yeah, that yeah, was a that crazy was, was movie. Hilarious. I forgot what movie. He was that the only cop that had long sleeves on. I think oh, it's cool. Well, it's because his, his arms are covered in tattoos. Yeah. Well, a few tattoos. Yeah. Yeah, oh, he's getting old. He's not that old. We're all getting old. Yeah. Was it the... <laughs> he's, got, he's got the salt and pepper going on now. Oh, yeah, he does. What's that movie? I think it was called Heat. Yes, that was... Yep, I think it yep, was there Heat, you go. Yep, right? Yep, the Heat. Yep, that's what... Yep, or The Chase. He was Officer Dobbs. It was either Heat or The Chase. Anyway, go do a search for Henry Rollins. I don't think he's ever driven a Mini Cooper, however. Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. Can you imagine Henry Rollins rolling up in a mini? I uh, actually I could. Yeah, maybe. That'd be practical. Yeah, I think cool. that would work out well. That would probably work out well. It'd have to have like some kind of exhaust or something cool. Boom system. Yeah, I don't I, know. I, I think more people need to be rolling up in minis lately. To tell you the truth. <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about that. Uh, Todd's got some insight. More insight on sales. Uh, we've got. Some, I found an interesting piece. Um, about electric car sales. We're going to talk about that as well. Uh, plus a few other pieces from motoringfile.com. We're going to get to all that here in just a few minutes. But before before we do that, like we always do, I would like to direct you to one of the fine sponsors here underneath the white roof. Our friends over at OutMotoring, OutMotoring.com. You guys love these guys. They're awesome. New website is awesome. Go check it out on your phone. I'm going to link it up in the show notes so you can just tap through and just tap and it's going to pop open on your phone. Don't do it if you're driving because, well, 
that's not very safe. But you can open it on your phone, your tablet, your computer, whatever. doesn't matter because it'll size to refit. It's one of those little fancy uh, responsive websites. So it works everywhere. Super awesome. Not only that, it's got a brand new hot search that works amazingly awesome. Makes it easy for you to find exactly what you're looking for. Super great. Go over there. Check it out. That's at outmotoring.com. Don't forget when you're there, I want you guys to make sure you sign up for the email newsletter. You guys have done that already. But just in case... There's any stragglers out there. If you do that, what happens is you get an email, whatever, one a week or so, uh, and it gives you, Aaron sends you over your own 5% discount code. So anytime you place an order, you automatically save 5%. It's like better than going to Kohl's because you don't have to ask. It just happens automatically. He just says, here's your code. Just use this. Done and done. You get it like what? An email a week. You get more emails from Target and GoDaddy. Honestly, go outmotoring.com get that taken care of um, and then you, you know don't forget the, the free shipping on most things over $195 don't forget he's adding over 3,000 new items every month and it doesn't just not the go fast bits and the you know the glove box organizers and the shirts and the hats and the shoes and all your personal stuff it's all the little Philly bits it's all the little pieces that you need to repair your car the clips and the the body panels and you know wheels and weather stripping and if you need it for your mini Aaron's got it over at outmotoring.com. Why don't you go over and check it out? Outmotoring.com. Uh, we like those guys. You do too. Outmotoring.com. Mini performance speed and um, hmm. Let's just go mini performance speed and how about uh, F series exhaust systems? Now in stock. Yeah. Outmotoring.com. Oh, let's go see what we got for F series exhaust systems. AWE tuning exhaust, huh? For the F56. For those of you who don't want to drop the coin on a on a proper exhaust like the JCW exhaust, right, Todd? But yes. we're not we're not going to judge or anything. Oh, that AWE exhaust looks nice. I would and I would say that um, yeah, the mini exhaust is is expensive relatively speaking. The uh, installed price on that usually run you about two grand. The AWE looks like it's uh, nine hundred bucks. With yeah, tips. I offered somebody the JCW exhaust uh, today, and they were like, you know, that's a little bit out of my price range. Mm. I was like, yeah, I figured as much, but I wanted to give you all of your options. Right. I should drop a video of my car driving down. Um, uh, I'll do that. I'll drop it in Slack later. Oh, there you go. That'd be rad. Uh, yeah, you can get, I'm actually looking at this AW. This looks like a really nice, looks like a really nice exhaust. And you can get it track version or the touring version. I'm guessing the touring version is probably more quiet. Track version with chrome tips or black tips, if that's how you roll, is at 850 bucks. Touring with chrome tips, because, you know, chrome is 900 bucks. That's not too bad. That's a nice looking exhaust, too. I hear, I, I hear through my people mm. that Dynan is going to come out with an exhaust mm. for the F56. Really? Yes, yes, they've they've got it done. They're working doing final development stages of it now, and uh, it should be coming very soon. So that's that's kind of exciting. That that's really that, exciting because you know what would tie in really nice with that Dynan exhaust would be that Dynan uh, that Dynan chip flash. Yes, that, yeah, that Dynan tune. Yeah, it's basically a tune. It's you're not really adding a chip, but it's a right. it's a tune for your car. And I still swear by the thing. You there know? there was somebody who posted on Facebook, and I forgot who it was, and if it was you, I, forgive me, um, that said they did it on their Cooper, and they love it. Yeah, we talked about it last week. It was yeah. our, uh, a guy from from one of the Philly dealers. Oh, that's right, uh, John Cooper. So, yep, it's a fantastic thing. And Chad, you're working on uh, going to be carrying those. I take it. Yeah, yeah, we've uh, we've sent some emails and uh, just waiting to hear back from some people as uh, as we do our day to day operations. So, nice. well, I swear by it. Um, I've had it for well since mid July, so about three months now. And uh, no issues whatsoever. Absolutely love it. Now, the only time I don't love it this morning, uh, I had issues because it was 49 degrees uh -oh. and, and raining. And I've got ultra performance summer tires on my car <laughs> and an extra 40 horsepower. <laughs> so what you said is you couldn't get optimal traction for yeah, the yeah. driving conditions. <laughs> Let's say the additional horsepower and the additional torque that the Dynan tune gives me combined with cool temperatures and uh, tires that are not made to perform below 60 degrees. Yeah, it was an interesting morning for me driving today. Very cool. But I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to winters yet. I, I swear I'm not moving to winter tires because, you know, it's going to be in the 70s again for the next couple of weeks. Oh, yeah. So it's, it's way too early. Yeah. Way too early. Uh, really quick before we get to news, I want to do a quick shout out to... 
the boys over at Motor Works Magazine, Motor W E R K S Magazine. I think a lot of you already follow them on Facebook. Um, they're a, a print magazine out of Canada, I believe. Is that right? About Mini Cooper Correct. stuff. Yeah, they're out of Canada. Uh, they uh, actually posted our, they featured our um, press release about having 600 episodes in the latest release of MotorWorks Magazine. So go over there and check them out. MotorWorks Magazine. Uh, looks like they do some pretty legit stuff, uh, like every other month or so. Yeah, yeah. They uh, they got quite a heavily influenced on minis as well as many other cars. And uh, mm-hmm. everybody that I've ever heard that's worked with him, as well as I've met him once, uh, have always been like, you know what? He's a solid guy. It works out well. So. Good guy, much yeah. uh, much better than other magazines, which shall remain nameless. Is hey, that still around? hey, you know what's really funny? <laughs> You're not gonna go there, are you? Yeah, because you know what's oh, happening. You know what's there. happening in December. Go <laughs> go go! Motoring dot com is finally gonna come around. December twelfth. Watch for it. <sighs> dum, Holy dum, crap, dum, dude. Dum, 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 I had to. Come on. Come no, on. We're, we have to we have to rub it in. That splash page has been up, I swear to you, for five years. Now. Dude, no, it's longer than that. It's like seven years. Is it like seven oh, years? Oh dude, yeah. it's forever, yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. Wow. Yeah. And wow. and uh we're gonna get to news here. Before we actually get to news, let me uh let me do a quick shout out to our man Pedro down in Florida. Uh it's his fine image you are seeing. It's this week's show art. He uploaded it to our Facebook page. This was from a weekend at uh, I believe it was Daytona Raceway. Uh, Sebring. With the Sebring race, so with the mini club, some really good look, uh, some fine looking minis in that group, uh, including his uh, his Clark, which is an F fifty six with a Superman color scheme, which is pretty dope. Anyway, go over there, check it out, or just look on your podcast app. Pedro, thanks for sending that in. Uh, we're always looking for new photos to feature on the White Roof Radio uh, show image. All you have to do, it's not a competition. I, I find one. I like it. I could go back months, years, whatever. Just upload it to our Facebook page or do an at reply to us on Twitter or on Face or on uh, Instagram, and uh, you get a chance of your picture of your mini getting featured. Like I said, this week, thanks to Pedro for sharing one of his super duper awesome uh you should be following pedro over there at uh motoring fun anyway because he's done some really cool stuff to his f56 and it's kind of fun to kind of watch what he does like tuned it and mods and whatnot and he tracks it all the time which is pretty dope anyway thanks pedro moving on maestro which is me if you please boom okay let's get the easy ones out of the way first it is now official you can no longer buy a mini pacement well you can still buy them but they're not going to make them anymore finally official <laughs> which is funny because what would we say they've sold 56 oh, of them so like the whole year yeah not very many yeah yeah and it's not that we don't like the pacement but they've been phasing out slowly and now they're officially done i still think that car just confused everybody nobody and that car was confusing nobody knew what its purpose was nobody knew why they should buy it and it was awkward because the back seats weren't usable yeah. But every time I see one, I'm like, that's a good looking car. It's a good looking I mean, car. I, I, think, I think they were usable. I just, um, I don't think that the mini buying public was right for that car yet. Right. Because it's very similar to several of the Land Rover y kind of feel cars. Okay. Yeah, it didn't have the four doors, but it still had that same kind of shape and feel and utilitarianism and it, of that car, you know? It's interesting Chad brings up uh, Land Rover because the uh, Evoke. The Range Rover Evoque had a four. They have a four door. That's the standard. But they also had a two door version of it for a very long time, right. which didn't sell well at all. Huh? It was. It was. I believe just like BMW it was more expensive, and it was like a coupe version. Of, I don't even know how they described it. Well, yeah, the Paceman was more expensive than the uh, Countryman too. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. So, so let me ask I, another question, Paceman related. Even though this one's going away, do you think they will recreate the pacement on the new no, platform? You don't think no. so? They're going to make no. that four door only. Pacement was a failed experiment, and they know. <laughs> Correct. Yes, they're not. They're not going to do it again. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Say goodbye, was, Paceman. At the very least, it was poorly executed. And our big discussion a week ago, if you didn't hear it, go back and listen to it about a uh, four door car or mm. two door cars in general. Yeah, kind of getting the kibosh everywhere like if you're not buying a sports car like say a miata you know a convertible or sure. something like that or a corvette um what's out there with just two doors 
there's 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 a few cars left. I mean, you can still buy the Fiat 500 is still two door. No, you can still buy some BMWs. Um, yeah, that are two doors, the but, two series and you buy the odd three series here and there. The uh, Nissan Z. Yeah, the Z still and the and the, the uh, GTR and the, and the Infinity version of the Z. And all Ferraris. of these, yeah, all the things we're <laughs> describing are very sporting cars. Like they're yeah. very, they're very sporty. There's not many. Now right. I, I think does does Honda still make uh, two doors that you can get? Besides, I don't. I'm not talking about the CRZ. Like, can you get a two door Accord now? I don't think I do you can get a two door. And I don't I think, think you can still make a two door Civic. I don't think they do. I mean, just like Ford, yes just back, like Ford with the Focus. I don't think Honda makes. I mean, that's an interesting question. Somebody look. I don't know the I'm, answer. I'm to checking that. right I, now. I as a car guy, and a let's go Honda. Honda. Let's go Honda Civic. Um, four doors. Oh yeah. You can still get the Honda Civic Coupe as a two door. Well, there you go. That's the only one. Starting at a nineteen one five zero. Forty miles. Uh, the whole the point. Gallon. The whole point is, I think two door cars are kind of going away, and the paceman was something that just can, like DB said, confounded everybody. You right. know, the buying public of going, why would you have a two door SUV that doesn't make any sense whatsoever? Exactly. They just can. People just confused. They didn't get. Uber it. doesn't have one. Yeah. Weird. Weird. Yeah, um, you know move. the uh, the Ford Mustang and the Chevy Camaro are still two doors. Oh, see, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah but they're not four wheel drive jacked up SUVs. That's no, they're not. No, they're, they're not. But uh, I'm still waiting for Chevy or GM, to, either one of those companies, to make that car four doors. Oh yeah, actually, I I suspect the Camaro will probably be a four door. I want to see too long. Chad, this is what I want to see. And while you're afraid of listening, audience, I know you guys are with me. I want to see a Mustang wagon. Um. <laughs> well, they had the the super hatchbacks back in the day. No, I want a I want a station. I want a I want a Mustang wagon. I want it cut in half. I want to stretch out a little bit. I want it to be wagon form. Okay, that's what I want. And I want all the hot tuning bar pits on it too, like total race car stuff. But like in, a GT five hundred, like a GT five hundred, but in station wagon form. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Maybe not. Anyway, let's move on. Let's talk about sales again. Um, First, I want to start off with the positive. Worldwide mini sales. Worldwide, this is the global, all of the minis that were sold for the entire month of September for the first time sold 40,000 cars for the entire month of September. That's impressive. That is a lot of cars for mini, right? Never happened. Never sold that many cars before in an entire month before, ever. And it happened in 2016. And what's most impressive about it is they're <laughs> doing that and sales in the U.S. are down. Sales in the U.S. are down. But everybody else is. I don't. I don't get it. I want to be a fly on the wall in like the board of directors meeting when they're discussing this, and I want to hear how many f bombs or what the equivalent is in German. <laughs> Although the official the official language at BMW and Mini is is English at corporate, so I want to hear how many f bombs are flying around in that discussion. Right. As to why uh, U.S. sales are down and. They've been down all year. It's not just lately, and and I think Alex uh, alluded to this last week, and you and I, you guys and I were talking before sh- the show uh-huh. that I think the uh, the uncertainty of the political environment in the U.S. right now we're in the midst of there's an election in three weeks, right? And everybody's just kind of nervous, kind of waiting to see what happens, you know, one way or the other. And, waiting for uh, World War Three to start or not? Exactly, or civil war, you sure. know, <laughs> whatever it's going to be. Um, I think everybody there's a, there's a lot of uh, economic uncertainty in the U.S. right now, but that's only been for the last couple of months. Like seriously, for the last couple of months, mm-hmm. the mini trend in sales has been all year since January. Right. It's been it's been a downward trend since then, and um, I don't know. I'm still scratching my head as to why because you know having had my car now for six seven months, I love it. I love the JCW. I love the new mini. Um, now, that being said, we had the F56 Cooper for a while, and we didn't love it when we didn't love it so much that we backward downgraded, if you will, <laughs> downgraded to a, uh, a Roadster. Right. A 2013 Roadster. But I don't know. What are, you, what are your guys' thoughts on this, your perspective? And I know, you know, neither one of you drive a, a, one of the new ones much lately, but I just want to know from what you see and hear and the people you talk to, what are your thoughts on why is the U.S. trend downward for the whole year 2016 while the rest of the world is up? So I, I, I've recently moved. I, I know you guys know I've moved. And I've moved to, uh, I, I lived in the burbs before, but now I live in the uber burbs. 
this uh-huh. this area that I live in now is suburban, like really suburban. Um, right. And the only thing I see around here, and I'm not kidding, is I don't see any minis in this part of town at all, except for mine. Occasional mini here and there. I see the small SUVs. Right. Everywhere. The CRVs, the little Nissan whatevers, uh, all the little Toyota whatevers. I see that car and pretty much that car only. It's crazy. That's all that I see. I feel that a lot of people, you know, especially with gas prices being a little bit down right now, Mm -hmm. I definitely think that they want more what they think to be room. Mm -hmm. And that usually equates to a larger vehicle. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. I don't that, think I, it's about, yeah, I agree with you, Chad, but I don't think it's about room. I think it's about, I, I don't know why people feel better driving a bigger car, Yeah. but it's kind of always been that way in the U.S. Mm-hmm. And when economy doesn't come into it, and it's not because gas prices are still down, hovering around $2 a gallon. I think I today I saw two oh two. Wow, in fact, you're oh, cheap. We're oh, to the two. weekend last weekend, I saw $1.99. I am not kidding you. And that was not a... Hey, buy groceries from us and get your gas for a dollar ninety nine. No, this was legitimately the regular gas price was a dollar ninety nine last weekend. I saw on the road here in Kansas City. So that being said, Chad, I think you're right. People want the they're they're not thinking economically. Like, well, I don't care. I can fill up my forty gallon tank and get eight miles to the gallon, and it's fine. You know, I can afford it. Right now, when that price goes up and uh, back around four dollars a gallon, and it's bound to. I mean. It, yeah, someday. It, it's bound to eventually. Um, people's attitudes are going to change. Now, what's even more interesting is I don't think minis anymore get that much better mileage than a lot of other you know other vehicles. Mm-mm. They get better mileage than you know your average Escalade, I'm sure. Well, yeah, but, they're, but they, they but they don't get I, worse. I mean, they're right there. Everybody gets thirty miles to the gallon now. I mean, yeah. unless you're buying you know a small Honda or something, those like forty, but. All these cars get 30 miles to the gallon. Yeah, and I definitely think Mini could get better gas mileage if they really tried. I don't think that they are fully doing everything that they could to get better gas mileage out of the car, you know? Yeah. Yeah, there's a, there's a, uh, it's a sweet spot that I don't think they've found since 2003, you know, in the early days when we all had good performance in our cars, but we also got really good gas mileage. Right. I, I think we had a sweet spot from, you know, 02 to 06 that seemed really great. And now it seems that somewhere those those paths have diverged and for the performance, like I love driving my JCW, but I get I average 22 23 miles to the gallon. Yeah, see, you know what that's really funny cuz there's a, a a BMW 528i in my house now, uh, 2013, and it basically has the same motor that's in your car, Todd. And yep. that car, I mean, not driving it like a race car, but just driving it on the freeway, driving it around town, it's pulling down 30 miles to the gallon. Yeah. And, and that's, I think it's, I think it comes down to how Todd's driving, though. Well, let's, yeah. let's be honest, Todd, every, it's always a race. Well, I mean, it's not that it's always a race, <laughs> but every driver has a different driving style. You know, right. like, I don't necessarily look at my car going, oh, my God, I have to get 30 miles of the gallon or I'm going to be completely I was like, you know what? I have a little bit of money. I want to put it in my tank and I want to drive how I want to drive. Yes. And sometimes that's just smoke and mirrors, <laughs> more smoke than mirrors. But then sometimes <laughs> it's like, you know what? I'm just going to drive normal and I'm going to do this. And, you know, so, you know, and we've tested this theory other times, too. You know, my employee, he was like. I can never get better than 23. I can never. I was like, look, you need to just totally baby that car one week and see if this really helps. Or we could start looking into things. He goes, yeah, it's my driving style. (laughs) I was like, yeah. I mean, really. I mean, there are the cases where all of a sudden, you know, you go from I was getting 30 miles to the gallon all the time and now I'm getting 22. And it's like, okay, well, let's look at things. You know, are you got a vacuum leak? Do you have a bad alignment? Are the tires changed? You know, what's going on? We can find those things. But. A lot of it comes down to if a car is supposed to get, you know, theoretically, because there have been Ford issues and whoever, you know, if a car is supposed to get somewhere around 30, you should be within one or two miles to the gallon of that on average, right. unless you are driving to make it not that way. So, yeah. 
And can I say, I did a little experiment in my F56 over the past month, and I have um, I have that little thing in my car, the automatic. Right. I was just okay. looking at my automatic app anyway. So go and go ahead, Todd. Yeah. I haven't talked about this much lately, but for the first, you know, four months of, of owning this car, I was averaging 22, you know, miles to the gallon in it. But I drive it pretty hard, and it's all in-town driving. I don't get hardly any highway driving at all. I bet I'm less than 5% highway. So that also, Chad, like you were saying, that factors into, hey, you never take this on the highway, and I hit a lot of stoplights. Oh, like, yeah, 100%. Like, I'm, I'm sitting at the light a lot, right? So I did an experiment about a month ago, and I go, you know what? I've been driving around for four months without the uh, auto start stop feature that Mini's put on. Oh, cars. I had to turn that off on the BMW. I almost got in a couple accidents because of it. You know, it is kind of interesting because I, I hear other cars at lights that have it, and it you hear it start up all of a sudden and take yep. off. Yep. And I can see it being good, and I can see it being bad, but it does. It throws me off. It's it's not it, quite it, the the normal. You get, you get used to it, and especially with a manual transmission car. Because you put the clutch in, and like literally the instant your foot touches the clutch at the top of it, you know, when you start to depress it, mm -hmm. before your foot gets to the floor, pressing the, start. In, yeah. the car started. And so then it's not disconcerting and it's not really, it doesn't change your driving style at all. What it does do is that, you know, if you like, you should be driving your manual transmission, it's coming to a stop and putting it in neutral. Um, there's been a couple of times when I've missed the gear. I've missed putting it in first because I wasn't paying attention. It's like, oh, quick, put the clutch in. Oh, crap, reverse. Oh, third gear. You know, and <laughs> it's just trying to rush it like that. That's been the only thing disconcerting about it. But the point of my story is that I turned it on for a month mm -hmm. and I tried to see, is this really helping? And other than the annoyance that if you sit at a light too long, I have a, a hardwired in Valentine One radar detector into my car, and it's it's uh, hardwired to the to the fuse board. And the reason I did this is because if it was wired into anything else, when the start stop function on the car engaged, like you come to a light and you the car shuts down, it doesn't shut all the way down. It leaves the radio and electricals on, but it would kill my radar detector. And then when I'd start back up, it would go through the process oh. it beats at you and yeah. it restarts and it was annoying and i'm like you just got to find the a different circuit to put it so into. i found i found a different circuit i plugged it hardwired to where it, it didn't do that anymore so i'm like okay let's go ahead and uh and try this for a while and see what happens and i gotta tell you i got 10 percent better mileage with the start stop feature on i was getting two miles to the gallon better i was up around 24 24 and a half instead of 22 nice. for this test and uh and sure enough it wasn't just me like the automatic told me that over the course of a month and i'm like i didn't change my driving style i just when i come to a stoplight and you know the car would shut down and sometimes the light would last you know 30 seconds 40 seconds. i mean i have some long lights right to see through. so you start thinking about it and you're like i do a lot of in-town driving it totally makes sense right so nice it's it's a really good feature for that and um I've turned it back off now instantly because I found that if you sit at a light too long, like if it's a 30 second or more than that. It just that, kicks back in anyway. And sometimes it does. Yeah, one, the car will start itself if it, if you know, you're running the air conditioning or something like that. But after a certain amount of time, it shuts the power really down and turns still turns my radar detector off. And that was annoying. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't handle this anymore. Forget <laughs> the, I don't need the extra two miles to the gallon. That's too annoying. And not only that, I found here's another glitch, Mini. If you're listening, if uh, I, I use my iPhone to listen to uh, you know podcasts and, and music from it uh, on iTunes, and what happens is you come to a stop and the car goes into the the pause mode or whatever you call it in the start stop feature, mm -hmm. it shuts down, and you're listening to music. As soon as the car starts again, when you put the clutch in. What it would do is it would drop the volume level of whatever I was listening to, like two or three decibels. Like it drops it down, like noticeable. Like what happened? Did it turn That's it weird. down? And but it didn't change the volume on it. Hmm. And what it would do is if this happened five six times in a trip, it starts reducing the volume of what I'm listening to, and eventually I've got the volume full all the way up on the mini. Weird. to get it back to a listening level and it's, it's got to be a glitch in there somewhere and i'm sure many bmw blames apple for this sure that they say it's an ios problem which there are still problems yeah. but that just became so annoying to me it's like that's two strikes 
nope, I'm not gonna not gonna live with it anymore. So I turned the auto start stop feature off again, and I've stopped using it because of those conflicts. But do you sure think that it's part of the um, like the uh, you you go faster, the volume goes up? Yeah, no, because I've got my my speed control all the way down as low as possible, down to one. Okay. Just so checking, I was thinking yeah. that too. I was thinking that too. I looked at my settings and I'm like, nope, the speed volume is still down at one. Because I couldn't control it is what was odd, is it would change the gain of the, the source I was listening to, if you will. Right. Technically speaking. It just it, it's like a reducing the gain and I couldn't turn it back up until I shut the car off and restarted it and then everything was back to normal. And I'm like, this is just weird. And I'm sure it is so minor of a glitch that nobody else has ever noticed it or if they do they're like oh I just turn it up so i don't know that was that was my little two cents if you if you want good gas mileage and you're driving around in a new mini go ahead and try that start stop feature and unlike chat and db if it doesn't annoy you or you know oh, it, you know just almost, driving around i'm sure in, like, i would get used to it totally but it's it is automatic. kind of funny i'm sitting at a light and i'm you know doing whatever and I, you know, I see the light goes green and I start to go and then I hear the car next to me start up. And I'm like, oh, they must have start stop feature. And it's yeah. on cars that I, you wouldn't even really expect it to be. And I Chevy truck. couldn't even give an example right now. Yeah. But uh, DB, tell us your 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 uh, history with this in the BMW. Um, it's, it's with the automatic transmission. And again, I live in Uber suburbia, right? So driving around anywhere is like driving around in a parking lot and so um you know you're stopped for 10 15 20 seconds and you have and you get that chance to go now or you need to go now because otherwise a car behind you is going to run into you or somebody's going to there's a half a second delay there and there's a half second delay in the automatic so if you're driving around in a parking lot or in like really gnarly like traffic conditions i recommend turning it off anyway i i agree with you there because I don't think it's safe. But if you're just driving, oh, yeah, if you're, if you're a, driving to work, yeah. or you're just driving on streets with just regular lights, and yeah, turn it on. And I'm if just, you're in, a, in the middle of a traffic jam, that probably has got to be totally annoying. Oh god, uh, yeah, I would turn off if I was stuck in traffic too, because that's just <laughs> annoy me to no end. Well, and that's the thing is, uh, BMW, it's different. I think every time you um, does it stay off when you turn the car off, or do you have to turn it off every time? No, um, it, when you. Turn it when you turn stop start feature off on the BMW. Um, it comes back on next time you start the car. So now, if you turn see, it off, has and you, now there might be some programming. I haven't gone through the programming on this car yet. No, I, did, I think that's the way it worked in the in the BMW is that you have to turn it off every time you get yeah, in the car. Right. Whereas the Mini is not like that. You turn it off once and it stays off forever. Until oh, you until turn you turn it back on. As many times as you get in out of the car, or unless you unhook the battery. Um, it'll stay off forever until you say, yeah, I want to use that feature again. So oh, okay. that is one thing that Mini did right uh, that is programmed into this. So Nice. I'm uh, looking, just for those of you who are playing the home game, automatic home game, we haven't done this on the Twitter for a while, but I've been averaging a score of 40, just so everybody knows, and my current average miles per gallon is 32. Okay, hold on. Uh, it, since, we're, since we're doing this here, dude, you are going to freak out at my score this week. Hmm. 69. No. Yeah, I've got a 69 score. Granted, I've only driven 49 miles this week. Okay. <laughs> but I'm getting 22.9 miles to the gallon, according to this. And uh, even if I go to the previous week, I also got a 69. I was getting 23.4 miles to the gallon last week. But see, that's also uh, a gauge of I was using the start-stop feature. Mm -hmm. So I went from 23.4, 23.4, back down to 22.9 since I've turned it off. Wow. This week. So that's how they're, they're right there is, you know, 0.5 half a mile per gallon. Yeah. Just in a week. Just yeah. in a week of not doing that. Wow, that's good. I'm going through my daily stats here because I'm over at the automatic website. And I'm getting good gas mileage during the day. It, it's funny how much difference in gas mileage you get between moving and not moving. So the last yeah. couple of days I've been driving not in traffic. And on the 18th, I drove a lot of miles. I forgot how many I drove that day. It was 150 some odd miles I drove. And I averaged 34.2 miles a gallon. Yesterday, 35.7. Uh, today I'm at 30, but I got st I had to drive in traffic. And then if I go back to Monday, 27.4. Crazy. It's a huge difference getting stuck in traffic. Yeah, and I went back to the trip on Mini Takes the States when you know we did like mostly highway miles for yeah for that. And I was averaging 31 miles to the gallon in the JCW. 
wow. full on 31, 31 on the highway. And yeah. I was, we were doing 70 to 90 the whole time. And that's because the speed limits uh, in a lot of places were 85. Yeah. You know, we were doing 90 because the speed limit across, you know, oh, Dakota right. was 85 miles an hour on the right. highway. Super nice. Uh, it, it was, I'm sorry, 80 miles an hour. So right. we were doing 85 to 90 probably. Yeah. Pretty consistently and still getting 31 miles yeah. to the gallon. So the Mini's a, a pretty efficient car. Yeah, but uh, how come people aren't buying them? Though? That's still still a weird. Nobody in the United States is buying uh, them. I guess we're just have to go with the whole electric electric election thing. <laughs> Either that. Speaking of fuel economy, I think we need to at least address this: that many officially mm, yes, and that the Countryman plug-in hybrid is coming. Yes, uh, in the next iteration of this, that's that's going to be released. Good God, we don't know when. It's been. It's. I think it's been pushed back to Detroit now in January. Mm, still, we're going to see yeah. it. They, they've got test cars rolling around, running on electricity. We you see know. the pictures of, uh, of uh, you know, the, the guys in the car talking about it. And um, Sebastian uh, Mackinson, the you know mm-hmm. head of Mini Worldwide, mm-hmm. he's the one talking about it. And there's comments about, it. you know, this is a, an official release from Mini. Right. That this plug-in hybrid technology, which is not new. It's been on BMWs for a few years now. And uh, a friend of mine has a plug-in hybrid 3 Series right now. And he likes it, but he said, one, the electrical end of it, I think you can go either, it was like 20 to 30 miles is all. Right, um, right. And, that, and, that's yeah. a, and that's the problem with the hybrid cars. Yeah. Is the, you, you can only go, well, the, the hybrid, the reverse hybrids, or whatever they call that. Right. Um, you can only, you'd have really low electric range. Like if you're just driving to run the kids to school or something, there's a good chance you'll do only electric. But when you get on the freeway, it's like, well, okay, not so much. Now. Yeah. Well, the technology is interesting in this. And it's also, you know, a plug in. Like this is a kind of car where you can go park it in the special spaces at you know, mm-hmm. local grocery store wherever and plug it in while you're in shopping right and it's kind of cool and get, then just get free electricity is, yeah pray that somebody doesn't steal your cable <laughs> I, hear that, I hear that's happening i hear that's happening i thought those came with cables or is that the no. new thing that people steal like when you go to when you go to the gas it's, station and there's no air hose or no water hose because somebody's cut it off well because you know now they're all universal all the uh, plug-in cars use the same cable the same you know plug right, thing now. Right. i'm sure they're pretty expensive right well, there's got to be like a, a a black market for these things or something. I'm sure they sell them on Amazon for like twenty seven dollars now. <laughs> yeah. So but you know anyway, you know what I'm really interested. in? I'm interested in you, the white roof, fine white roof radio listener, who out there is interested in the plug in hybrid mini of any flavor. Uh, it could be the Countryman that's coming up, or maybe you want to see the Clubman. Who's interested in that? Leave us a note in the show notes scooter. or post something over on Facebook. The electric scooter. <clears throat> well, give up on that. I think if you can get a if you can get a countryman, let's say the utility of a countryman in all wheel drive, that is getting, let's say just for forty miles to the gallon. Yeah, let's say forty miles to the gallon because you're running because you're rocking the electricity. Who wouldn't want that? And and the whole point of this article and this release was that the car still needed to be fun to right. drive. It still needed to have the handling capabilities, and the fact that they said. The batteries and the electric motor and everything uh, are in the center of the car, just past the middle, and they basically power the rear wheels. Right. So this is a cool thing. Uh, when you're driving under full electric power, you are driving a full rear wheel drive mini. Cooper. Rear rear wheel drive mini. But they say the weight balance because of where the batteries and the and the you know drivetrain is for that. Do you think? It, what, do you it's think one of the it's the best balanced minis? Ever. Do you think it's fifty fifty weight distribution? They didn't go so far as to say that, but they said it brings almost optimal balance to the car, right. which we all know that changes handling. It's a it's a very important part of, of handling. So I don't right. know. I, I'm, I, I'm excited about this. Right. And I am seeing here that speeds of 60 miles an hour are possible when you're under all electric mode, too. Yeah. Yeah. That's I'm, pretty. I'm, I mean, a lot of a lot of hybrid cars, the plug in hybrids, you're limited to 30 or 40 miles an hour on electricity. Exactly. I have a lot of neighbors who have uh, hybrid cars, and it's funny. I'll be out walking the dog, and they're driving through the neighborhood, and they'll pull out of their driveway, and the cars are pretty silent. But as soon as they get halfway up the street and they punch the gas a little bit, mm-hmm. you hear the engine kick in, and then you can hear the car. Right. So, DB, you're right. They, they, you know, as soon as you hit like 30 miles an hour, sometimes it's like, oh, it's under. We're not going to use all this electricity. Right. Boom! Here comes the gasoline engine. Or imagine if it's hot. You know, you get the air conditioning running. 
And the interesting thing about this car, the Mini, is they say they, they've got all kinds of features on there. Like, to conserve electricity, you can go and say, uh, I want to conserve this, go into full, you know, uh, right. uh, full gasoline electric. power mode. Oh, yeah. Um, it's it's fascinating, and I think it'll be a lot of fun for the for the tech people in this. I do think that the first couple of generations of this, or at least the first generation, are not going to be as good as the next. Right. You know, that, that being said, this is not new technology for BMW. They've had it on, on BMWs for quite a while now. So, right. You know, All right. That'll- so an X1 sized countryman with a hybrid, hybrid motor, hybrid, a plug in hybrid. Who wants it? And handles like a mini. And handles like a mini. Who wants it? Leave us a note in the show notes. Why you're afraid of.com. Just click through on your app. Leave us a note. Be curious. Um, what else do we got? Worldwide Mini Sales. We'll talk about that. So, and I found this other story because we already talked about the mini stuff. This was really interesting, and I put out a link in our in the Slack channel. Um, some hippie electric car blog um, posted some very interesting luxury sedan sales numbers comparing quarter three 2015 to quarter three 2016 and compared cars like the 7 Series, the S-Class, CLS class from Benz, um, Maserati, the A7, Lexus LS, the Porsche Panamera, things like that with the tesla model s (coughs) and percentage wise tesla's kicking everybody's ass except for the seven series which i think is why bmw and companies like that are coming out saying oh we're gonna really push electric now we're we're gonna have an electric car by 2019 fully electric whatever by a fully electric mini by 2019 and you know bmw is pushing the same way and uh, it's because Tesla's going to start eating everybody's lunch. Right. You know, they've been at it long enough. They're getting better at it, and sales are starting to pick up, and people are going, this is really a good car. Right. It's, it's really practical for a lot of people because, you know, a car that gets two, 300 miles on a charge, it's not the impractical thing we were just talking about, like, oh, we can go 20 or 30 miles on electrical charge. We're talking about going two or 300 miles, which is yeah, as much about, as a uh, tank th- full. That's going a week for a lot of people. <laughs> Well, yeah. How often do you guys fill DB? How often do you fill up your your mini with people? every four hundred miles? Well, so, I mean, how 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 many days? Oh, um, roughly every let's call it ten to twelve days. Okay, so let's think about that. An electric car, if you know, like a Tesla, for example, mm-hmm. you could drive it potentially for for two weeks, two weeks without plugging it in. Yeah, that's strong. Not that you would. Chances chances are you probably plug it in at least once a week. Well, my guess is it's going to be like your cell phone. It's just going to be in habit when you get home. Pull, <laughs> you just get home off, plug in the car. You, you just plug it in, you know? Just yeah. like most people plug in. Like I do. Every night I go to bed, I plug in my cell phone and let it charge every, all night. Every night. That's what I do. Yeah. It's I just knew. one of those habits that you get into. So, yeah. But anyway. Uh, anyway, I thought this was interesting, though. Uh, Tesla's up. To from last year, uh, 59%. 7 Series is up 219%. But that's because of the new 7 Series, and they're offering it as, as a diesel in Europe or something. Um, but it comes with CarPlay. What's that? And it comes with CarPlay. And it comes with CarPlay. Um, but you get into the, the Benz S-Class and the CLS class, uh, those cars, 42%. That's 49% down to the year before total. Uh, A7 sales down 28% the year before. Lexus LS down 21%, so on and so forth. All these cars, except for the 6 Series and the 7 Series, are down to last year, which is just, just amazing, either. including the Jag XJ, which is amazing to me. These are U.S. numbers you're talking, and these about, are right? all U.S. numbers to be sure. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay, here I'm gonna blow. I'm gonna blow your mind, DB, that you just did this, and we were talking about why mini sales are down. Mm. You know, mini uh, back in 2014 went all premium on everybody, and this became a premium car. No mm. longer a small, sporty, fun car. It's a Hip, premium car. Hipster right? malarkey. I'm being somewhat. I'm being somewhat sarcastic, but I am being serious on the same time too. Back in 2014, mini became a premium car, and not a luxury car, but a premium brand and so what you were saying db is that all these premium brands are suffering right now yes so my question is could it be that that is not what the american consumer is after that's not what means something to them in a car anymore they want quality but buying the premium whatever it is is not what's selling right now. Yeah, but, yeah. People you know, want to people want to model S because it'll go 300 miles on a charge, and it's still and, a pretty nice it, car. And it's premium, but I don't think Model S's are sold on the. This is a luxury car. No. It's sold on the technology that's in it first, and right. it's designed well on top of it. Yeah, but it's not a it's not a status symbol first. 
it's a this is a piece of, this is the future you are driving the future which i think a lot of people want to do right i i want to drive the future right i mean it's powered by an ipad for crying out loud well i mean it's <laughs> not but but i mean you look inside a tesla and you get that big giant tablet screen right there and it's just like oh that's kind of cool well, i want that it. Not to mention a Model S does zero to sixty in like sub four well, seconds. Well, okay, let's let's sure that too. But <laughs> but I mean, but I think you're right. I think people are they're looking for not so much the the the, the luxury as maybe the the combination of all the things they want. The maybe they still want the luxury, but they also want Apple. They want CarPlay, or they want the the electricity, or and they want to, and they want to buy tires every six to eight thousand miles. Yes, because. The amount of torque that is going <laughs> through these things, and people are driving it, and it's addictive. Uh-huh. Having a, that much power is addictive. People are burning through on their Model S uh, uh, Teslas. Yeah, they're burning through tires in in six to eight thousand miles. Well, yeah, because I mean, who wouldn't? I mean, geez, come on. Yeah, man. I was gonna say that seems totally normal to me. I don't. Yeah, know. That <laughs> seems all right to me. I mean, you, you can could do zero to sixty <clears throat> in in three point nine seconds. I would be stop. doing that all day long, everywhere. I know. Everywhere I, know. I went. I'm going to yeah. the parking lot at the grocery store. Boom. Zero to 60. Look, it just happened. Sorry. I don't, yep. know, what, don't know what to do. I can't help myself. I put the, my foot on the gas and boom, I'm doing 60 miles an hour. Yep. Everywhere I would go. Anyway, interesting stats. I'll link this one up in the show notes for you guys. Um, I want to remind you guys now is a good time to remind you about another one of our fine sponsors here over underneath the white roof. And that, of course, our friends over at Craven Speed, CravenSpeed.com. Go over and check them out. They've got the new website, too. And it's, you know, and it's all responsive and looks good on your phone. Click through. I'm going to put a link in the show notes so you don't. There's no excuse. Click through and check it out. Uh, you can go over. You can meet all the guys and ladies that work for Craven Speed, which is super awesome. You can buy really cool stuff, not only for your Mini, but for other cars now as well. Um, don't forget, too, the things that you want to get from Craven Speed. I'm just going to help you out here. Is uh, the dipstick. If you have a first gen or second gen Mini, it's a dipstick that won't break. Uh, that you easy to take in, easy to put back in, and you can read it. Super nice. Uh, the Platypus license plate mount. For those of you who live in a state that makes you put a license plate on the front of your car. This one lets you do it without drilling into your bumper. Stubby antenna is always a hot pick, as well as the FlexPod adapter, which is one of my favorites, um, for holding your phone so that you don't have to put it in your hand and be that guy. Not only that, but there's like a ton of other stuff. Just click over to CravenSpeed.com. I want you to check it all out. They've been one of our sponsors since like forever. Uh, CravenSpeed's been sponsoring White Roof Radio Motoring Fall for as long as we can remember. Um, they're super great guys. Kellen's rad. Drinks brown booze like a boss. And if you ever get a chance to hang out with him in Vegas, it's always a good time. You could talk to him shop, talk shop about it. It's cool stuff. Go over there and do it. And don't forget, when you're at CravenSpeed.com, uh, scroll down to the bottom of the page. I want you to sign up for the newsletter. You get almost no emails from them unless they release something new or have something cool to announce. So literally, you don't get like the email a week or whatever that you get from like Outmotoring or from Target or whatever. No, you get an email when they go, oh, look, there's something cool. We better send an email out to everybody. Super simple. Just click down and do it. And when you buy something from Craven Speed, which is always awesome, there's a space there to leave a comment. We really appreciate it if you say something like, you know, thanks for supporting White Roof Radio. Uh, we like that. So do they. They, of course, being our friends over at Craven Speed, CravenSpeed.com. Go check them out. <clears throat> Kellen, you're going to be a SEMA. Let me know. Oh, yeah. Kill him. If you're going to be a SEMA, let Todd know. <laughs> oh, that was fun. We haven't done that in a while. <clears throat> Moving on. Actually, we think we're done. Yes. Yeah, I think we're done. Excellent. We're going to answer. I think we need to answer and ask Chad or two uh, questions I, next week. I think we're going to do that next week because we did get quite a few. I know Chad got to a couple of them. Um, yeah, we've so, been uh, we've been sending some emails back to people to make sure that uh, we do things in a timely manner. But we will definitely get them to the show because they uh, are good questions for everybody. They really are. Um, and we don't always sh- sugarcoat them as uh, mm. <laughs> the guys have seen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I want you guys to come back to the show next week. We're going to do do another show next week. We're not going to skip a week. Uh, we are going to be a little weird because everybody's got some travel. Todd's gone to SEMA. I've got work stuff. So we're going to be skipping another week here pretty soon, but it won't be next week. Next week we'll do Ask Chad. I want you guys to stick around for that. Uh, speaking of our friend Ask Chad, Chad, how's the new shop, the new Detroit Tune Shop coming on? Oh, wow, man. We are... Uh we are getting close, and we're going to start painting here any uh, any day now to get the the shop back to the clean state, and nice. uh, floors go in right after that, and then uh, then we're ready to pretty much 
you know, move in type of thing. We're just waiting on all the little paperwork, the the I's and the T's, as they say. So uh, we will be in there by the end of the year. Just uh, hang in there. As, as some people are following along on the Instagram or the, uh, the, the Facebook the Facebook pages or stuff like that, uh, they're getting to see a few little sneak peeks. So. Yeah, it's looking like it's come on really nice. You guys totally should be playing the Detroit Tune home game. Uh, follow on Facebook because for those of you who weren't paying attention or not playing the home game, uh, Chad actually bought a building for Detroit Tune. No more rent, no sir. Chad's gone legit, super <laughs> well, duper awesome. <laughs> it would definitely got bigger uh, bigger budget. So it's, yeah. Uh... So anyway, uh, and so now I want to remind you too that if you uh, want to do something really cool because you like Chad answering your questions when you send them in, it's like you to go over to DetroitTune.com and buy yourself something nice, please. Super simple. Yeah, tonight I put in a fire safe window between the shop and the the showroom area uh, at a tune of three hundred and one dollars <laughs> for uh, it was probably twenty two inches high by sixty inches long. So now what? you're completely compliant. I am totally compliant. We are safe. <laughs> nice. It will not explode under extreme temperatures. So now, and, and, so now, what we need is we need somebody to click over to DetroitTune.com and buy one of those NM Engineering Countryman rear sway bars. Um, a very nice piece for your Countryman. Gives you some a little bit better handling. It's only three hundred bucks. Help Chad pay for that yep. piece of glass. And Chad, can you uh, can you make flames come out people's uh, uh, exhaust if they want to? We could if we took out your catalytic converter, but yes. that is federally <laughs> illegal. Oh, okay. So we are a, what, uh, a Chad, an upstanding up and up shop. Chad, so. what if they trailer their mini in and trailer if, it if off? If it's going to be track only and there's no license plate on it, yeah, I could totally do whatever oh, you want. Nice, yeah. nice. Um, and for those of you who do have a license plate and it's not track only, and it, you know you do drive it on the street, and then you have one of those really fine uh, space saver spares that you got from Detroit Tune, you need to get one of the Detroit Tune spare uh, bags to keep that from getting tire stuff everywhere. Those bags yeah. are handmade with love. By Chad's mom, and they're indestructible. Like for real, so you can't like tear them apart. Virtually, virtually they're, indestructible. They're, they're doing, they're doing good. Yeah, we uh, we've been, uh, you know, it took off a little slow right at the beginning, but like any product, it does do that. Oh yeah. And then lately, my mom's been like, oh, God, I gotta come in more, make more bags. It's like, yes, mom, you need to make more bags. Come on in. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're, for- we're actually funding her remodel the bathroom oh. fund. It's all the money that she makes from making bags. Cause I pay my mom. I'm not just asking her to do it for free. Yeah, it's like, mom, ten bucks is ten bucks. Come on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what? She's retired. She's got nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we love our moms for those reasons. Oh, we yeah, really yeah. do. Uh, don't forget to uh, Chad. Detroit Tune is like the only place to get the Harvey C belt uh the seatbelt bags you can't get them anywhere else chad's got the largest selection of anybody go over to detroittune.com check them all out uh detroittune.com if you get a minute please we really appreciate it thank you and if you're ever in the area stop mm. on by because always. we always wheel and deal on the harvey stuff because i don't want to move it to the next building oh well, right i would rather buy oh. you and ship it in oh are, are we are we hearing clearance pricing on the harvey yeah, stuff well, if you show up in there person could be a, there could be a few good deals uh, could be some deals to be had if you stop in the shop so ladies gentlemen early get over to the uh, chris christmas is right around that corner christmas you is right around the corner go go help chad move less stuff detroittune.com <laughs> yep <laughs> no these will be in-person specials only so you got to go to the shop so if you're within three, four hours of the shop, Chad's already your shop anyway. He does all the work for your car. But now you have to go because he doesn't want to haul a bunch of stuff over to the new shop. He just wants to start off new. So go help him clear out some inventory. He's going to give you smoking deals. We're yeah, already uh, sales on the uh, on the Facebook page and stuff like that. So if nice. you follow us over there, you can start to see certain stuff that uh, we are already discounting at a bigger price to to, to move it out and and uh, not have to move it. Nice. So, you know, and you know Chad's motto, cash talks. Bullshit. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's right. And finally, I want you to guys click over to motoringstripes.com. You can order up some uh, Todd Pearson made stripes for your Mini Cooper. Install them yourself. Save a couple bucks. And then you can actually walk around and say, oh, hey, Todd Pearson installed these stripes on my car. And cross your hands behind your back. <laughs> and don't forget to Countryman bumper protection strip. Todd, did we ever do? did you ever do an F56 bumper protection strip? I'm remiss that those aren't on the site yet. Uh, mm. They are actually done. We did some further development into that to kind of tweak the size a little bit. Mm-hmm. But they are now tweaked, and um, very soon, I hope any day now, that I'll have the F56 and the F54 
Oh, nice. Clubman. The, the Clubman bumper protection strip, that was the one I was doing a little extra work on. Oh, nice. Uh, uh, should be available like any minute now. So keep an eye on MotoringStripes.com um, for all of that stuff. Don't forget, you go over for the swag stuff, the really cool keychains, motoring badges and a keychain. Form factor, super duper awesome. Just click on the swag and keychains link. And then also, too, the really, this is like the little inside baseball trick. Use the contact form if you are looking for the White Roof Radio Sunroof Delete Kit. Toddle sheet check quote. Send one out to you. It's super easy to install and it basically gives your sunroof, makes your sunroof not hot hot it's it's a life changer it really is if you live in the desert you live in the in the southwest you live any place where you get a lot of sunshine and <laughs> temperature sun yeah yes. yeah exactly. he speaks the truth on this like it, even on a even on a cool day even if it's 50 or 60 degrees and your car's sitting in the sun all day mm-hmm. it gets really hot inside of a mini and this really helps having you know, it's, block it's that huge and todd, and todd uses uh he doesn't use garbage vinyl for that piece no sir it's like the best stuff you can get it lasted on my mini uh, for th- the last one was with because it, it was just a solid color. There wasn't any ink, and the solid color ones. It would it's still on my mini, and it was three years old, and it's still nice and pliable. I could have peeled it right off. And by the way, I just learned. It's funny. I've been looking at the warranties on the material I use. You know, for horizontal surfaces, that um, 3M provides no warranty on their materials in the Southwest. Right. I think you told me that. I'm- on horizontal surfaces. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. I'll still warrant it for, you know, a, at least a year or two years. I mean, if it's if it's bad stuff, it's bad stuff. But like DB said, if it's going to last, you know, two years, you're good to go for at least a couple more. Right. Unless, yeah, unless it's... I've had mine on mine for two years at least. Oh, yeah. yeah. The Southwest. only one that didn't DB's last that long there. was the uh, the one with the ink, the White Roof Radio logo. Yeah, and that one. Get baked by yeah, the, that just got baked by the sun. Nothing you can do about that. Um, but the solid color, the solid color ones perfect if you have a white roof get the white sunroof delete kit you have black roof black sunroof delete kit you have a red roof doesn't matter if you have silver roof you have a body colored roof shoot todd a message over using the contact form at motoringstripes.com tell him what you need he'll shoot you a quote done and done super simple motoringstripes.com you know because blank is boring anyway i think we're done now yes sir perfect um i want to remind you guys one more thing ride bikes radio if you like bicycles brian dallas and i doing another podcast underneath the white roof uh, like 200 listeners now. It's insane. We're just talking about bicycle stuff. It's super awesome. Ridebikesradio.com. Find us everywhere you find White Roof Radio, except for iHeartRadio, and I'm still working on that. Um, but if you want to check us out, that's super awesome. We really appreciate it. Otherwise, this is the part of the show where I do like to make that funny clicking sound, and then I say... Questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and click back over to whiteroofradio.com. There you can leave us a note in the show notes. You can also email us feedback at whiteroofradio.com. But until next week, game, this is DB. I'm done. Cheers. See ya.